My name is Jonathan Briere. I'm with the Silver Team. My team and my fellow team members are Jordan and John. This week I'll be speaking about the frequency response for the level uh, station for the control system. I'll first reintroduce our system, giving you a uh, brief description of it. I'll talk about the steady state operating curve once again and also review on the step response results that were presented to you in last week's presentation. I'll talk about the equations behind frequency response. I'll then show you the results we got from experiments and compare them with the model. And I'll end with a brief conclusion. Here's the block diagram for our system. The input is the percentage input to the pump going into level station control system. The output is the water, water level, the water level measured in a tank. The left hand side of the screen you can see schematic of our system. Uh, water is pumped from a tank into another tank, then routed to yet another tank where uh, the level of the water is measured by a sensor. The right hand side you can see a picture of an, of an experiment being run. Here's the steady state operating curve of our system. As you can see, our range goes from 70% to 100% power input. The output operating range goes from about 2 centimeters all the way to about 24 centimeters. Any input percentages below 70 result in almost no water in the tank. Here's an example of the step response for our system that was introduced uh, in last week's presentation. As you can see, the, experiment, the experimental output behaves a little bit more linearly than the model output. Here are some of the uh, average dead times for the three different ranges that we've run. You can see the average dead times for the 90 to 100 percent input range are slightly higher than the other ranges. Additionally, the average time constants for the 90 to 100 operating range are higher. And this is important because when we chose a range to run our frequency response experiments, the higher ranges yielded an almost no oscillation in the output, so we're not able to get results for those ranges. And therefore, we only went with the 70 to 80 percent operating range. Here's an example of an experiment for frequency response. Uh, as you can see, we're running at an input level ranging from 70 to 80 percent, our baseline being 75 percent. The amplitude is 10 percent. On the output side, our amplitude was 9 centimeters. Uh, our amplitude ratio for that specific frequency is therefore 0.9. After running several experiments, we produced some Bode diagrams. The upper diagram shows amplitude ratio as a function of frequency. Uh, as you can see, our ultimate frequency is 0 0.01 cycles per second. That is where the phase shift reaches 180 degrees. The gain of the system is 0 0.75 centimeters per percent. And the ultimate gain is 0.2 centimeters per percent. Plotting a line from the ultimate frequency back to the last result, we can observe that the order of the system is 0.25 approximately. Here are the equations used for the modeling of the system. The input is simply a function of amplitude and frequency. Uh, AR is a function of the gain of the system, the frequency, and the time constant. The phase angle shift is also a function of those same variables. Here's a comparison of our uh, 
experimental results uh, juxtaposed with the model results. In the blue, you can see the experimental. The red lines represent the model. You can see those are fairly close. And in conclusion, it was important to pick the right range when running the frequency experiments and the model equation fits the experimental data, the experimental data fairly well.